Well, good morning, friends. I trust that you are enjoying your worship from home experience today. Our political leaders continue to advise us to stay home, protect the NHS and save lives. And although there is light at the end of the tunnel, uh, we sometimes just wish that this was all over. But it isn't. And the scientists and the, the researchers are working on finding that long-term solution that will allow us all to meet and mingle and move around freely again. Until that time comes, let's stay safe. And let's continue to be thankful for those who are making those decisions that will protect us. And remember those also serving at the front line who are caring for us. We are truly thankful. Well, for our reflection this morning, I've chosen a story from the book of Daniel, chapter 3, heard it read earlier. It is, of course, the tale of what I've always known as the three Hebrew boys and their trial by fire. This is another of those dramatic stories in the Old Testament that reveals something of the nature of God and the value of faith. These three boys had, along with Daniel, been taken captive when Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and his army sacked Jerusalem in 605 BC. These men were selected because of their breeding and their intellect, and they were to be trained in the ways of their captors and put to work in the royal palace. And if you want to read more detail on that, look at chapters 1 and 2 of Daniel and you'll get that context. The boys all had Hebrew names, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael and Azariah, but the names were changed to reflect their new masters and so they became Belteshazzar, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. But of course, just calling them by Babylonian names did not make them natives. Their awareness of their heritage and who they served went much deeper than that. Anyway, the story recounted in chapter 3 is the classic fiery furnace story. The Hebrew boys were told that they, along with the whole country, it has to be said, had to pay homage to the great golden statue of Nebuchadnezzar. Whenever the orchestra played, everyone had to fall down and worship the golden image. Disobedience would mean certain death. But the story tells us that despite the penalty, these boys would not bow down to that golden image. They knew the commandments. And they knew that worship belonged only to God. They would not worship an image made by man. And their non-compliance was, of course, noticed. <laughs> they stood out, literally, from the crowd. And they were brought before the king to explain themselves. The text tells us that no explanation was necessary because it was absolutely clear that these boys would not bow down and not compromise their faith. Even facing death, we have this testimony. Our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us from your hand, O King. But if not... Let it, let it be known to you, O King, that we do not serve your gods, nor will we worship the gold image which you have set up. What courage and faith is that? They believed in a God who could save them, 
but they were willing to submit to his will, believing that he knew what was best for them. The story goes on to reveal the results of their faith. Cast into the furnace, they are joined in the fire by someone who looked like a son of God. We believe it was Jesus. And they were not saved from the fire, but rather they were saved in it. It's a remarkable story in so many ways. And I suppose worthy of a much longer reflection than this this morning. However, what do we take from this story today? Well, perhaps the message for us is really a simple one. If we honour God with our lives, with all that we are and all that we have, then he will walk with us, even through fiery trials. There should be no compromise when it comes to our declaration of faith. The world around us may seek to take by stealth the things that truly belong to God. We need to be careful. Our act of worship may even slip down the priorities list and other things start to take precedence. Our, our regular spiritual disciplines of, of prayer and scripture reading and, and the giving of tithes and offerings, they may become less important. Well, whatever it is, I, I suppose you will know what your particular golden image might be. Just be careful where you choose to worship today. Paul, in those verses from chapter 12 of Romans, he warns against conforming to the world around us. Instead, encourages us to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Because it is in that, that act that we will discern what God's will is for us. Well, let me share a prayer with you this morning. Dear Lord, we thank you for the message of Scripture and for the reminder that you are with us in times of trial. Let us not forget that you call us to a life of service and give us courage to stand against the way of the world. May we never seek that easy way out. Lead us forward, we pray. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, may God continue to bless you as you worship him from home.